Hey everyone, weekly update. This is the beginning of September and over the past couple of days, I've been working on something that I'm really excited about. So let me show you a work in progress. This is only, it's not, it's not uh, available yet. It's like only on my computer right now, but I'm just so excited. I've got to show it off. It's all about the admin UI. So one great thing about our admin UI is it's really extensible. Taking a look at our new docs, we have a section here. There are lots of different things you can do in terms of translations, theming and branding, creating new detail views, list views, custom components, custom form inputs, history timeline, dashboard widgets, and changing the navigation. So the thing is, the admin UI is an Angular app, and not everybody out there knows Angular. If we go and look at the uh, NPM download stats, the one right up here in orange is React. Uh, last week it was at 21 million downloads and then next we have Vue uh, and then Angular. Vue and Angular are pretty much uh, similar. Svelte's in there as well just as a comparison. So Angular is like, uh, it's in the top three uh, most used frameworks out there but it's it's like way below React, like six or seven times less downloads than React. Um, we're not going to get into which is the best framework or anything here, but we're just looking at the cold hard facts. A lot more people know React. So when it comes to um, extending the Venger admin UI, those who don't know Angular are at a disadvantage because it is possible to uh, use other frameworks. We have a guide on it using other frameworks to extend the admin UI. But here's the thing, it's kind of hacky. It uses iframes, it uses the post message API, you're limited when you want to use a different framework. When you use Angular, then it's great. You you have access to everything. You can use all the internal uh, services of the framework, uh, all of our um, notifications and modal and uh, everything, all the components, you can just put them right in your extension. And it's just going to work. If you want to use React, then yeah, you can kind of make things work, but it's complex. I mean, let's just look at the docs. You, first of all, you need to start and create an extension module. You've got to write an Angular module anyway. And then there's a bunch of config, which needs a lot of uh, comments because it's kind of confusing and complicated. Uh, the special caveats for how to do some certain settings in Create Re React app. Um, you've got to set up a lot of stuff here. You've got to copy the assets over. You basically have to build a React app, compile it, and then copy all of that compiled stuff into a location for the admin UI to then run inside an iframe. It's the best I could come up with at the time. Uh, some people have made it work fine, but seriously, we need to make this easier. So I am on a drive to improve developer experience across the board in our APIs, in our GraphQL, in our documentation, and in terms of authoring admin UI extensions. And uh, in that vein, let me show something that I've been working on. So I want you to compare this config that's required to get a react based uh, UI extension working currently with what I'm going to show you now. Let's jump over to my dev config and take a look at this. Here's the equivalent uh, with a new approach that I've been working on recently. Um, there's no mention of ng modules. There's not a lot of complex kind of setup with paths. We just need to point at some, uh, some directory which is right here, experimental UI it's called. And we declare, we declare a couple of things, some shared providers and some routes. Uh, first of all, I want to take a look at this UI extensions.ts. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, expand out those imports. This is the entirety of the file. It allows us to do um, what we would normally do currently in a shared Angular module, we just export an array from this file. Here we're defining a section called my extensions and we're adding a couple of links. We're specifying the icons and where we want those links to go to. So let's focus on this first one, Greeter. And you can see here we've defined it. We've given it an icon and a label. And I'll show you what that looks like running in the admin UI. It's right here. Okay. Um, then we're pointing it at this root, extension slash example slash greet. And let's jump over to this roots file and we'll see we're registering React root components here. 
we pass it directly a React component, which we'll take a look at in a second, and we define which path it's on, greet, and we can pass it some uh, other information like the title, a breadcrumb, and we can even pass it props, arbitrary props, which will be passed down into this component. Now let's look at this greeter component. This is it. It's a plain old React component. Um, pretty straightforward. It receives the props that we defined in the root right here. Um, we're just going to say hello and then the name in, from the props and we've got a button with a handler. Now here's an interesting one. We've got a custom hook which is exported by Venger admin UI slash react which is where we're going to have all these react specific uh, infrastructure components hooks and so on. And this allows us to basically take advantage of the angular dependency injection and inject any service uh, from the admin UI app. In this case, we're going to get the notification service. Uh, it's all correctly typed so we can see what methods are available. So we're going to do a success toast notification and that happens when we click the button and that's the extent of the component. Very straightforward. There's no mention of the word Angular, there's no ng modules, there's nothing. It's just React and uh, that's it. So I'll show you what that looks like. Let's go over now and we we'll click on the um, root and we've got the greeter here. We've got the hello world, world is coming from the prop and we've got the button. If I click it, we get the toast notification. And let's just look into the DOM because like I say, the existing React interoperability is inside an iframe. Whereas if we look at this, we'll see that the hello world is actually just, it's just part of the DOM. There's no difference. It's like here, all this is our main admin UI Angular app. And right here, we've got our component, which starts from like here. And we've got the hello world and we've got the button and it's indistinguishable. There's no overhead with doing it this way. And we have full access to everything from the admin UI, uh, including all the styles, which is another big benefit. See, you know, I just need to put the right classes on the button and it looks seamless. It looks like the rest of the admin UI. Okay, so let's take it one step further and let's talk about custom fields. So custom fields are an amazing feature in Venger. They're so useful. Um, and the great thing is that you can define custom components, uh, which will render your custom fields and you can do whatever you want with that. Up until now, well, still now, apart from on my machine right here, you can only use Angular for um, admin UI components. So now we're gonna, I'm going to demonstrate how you will be able to use React to render an admin UI, uh, a custom field component. So we're defining uh, on the customer entity an age, which is an integer, and we're telling it to use the component with the ID React number input. And if I look back into my experimental UI components, we have uh, well, it, first of all, let's look here in UI extensions where we've got this uh, this new um, function called register react form input component, self-explanatory. We give it the ID. This ID is matching the one that we specified here. And then we're passing it a react component, which is here react number input. We'll click through to that. And again, it's a pretty straightforward react component now. Uh, we're using also the injector again uh, and injecting the notification service. But here's the interesting thing. We've got a, another custom hook called use form control, which has a value and a set form value. Um, it's a bit like, like the um, a use state kind of thing. It's doing a little bit more in the background though. Uh, this is, allows us hook, to hook into the uh, Angular form control object, which is what drives all of our forms and the validation and so on but it just wraps it up. If I click through that, you can see the source code of this custom hook looks like this. There's a little bit to it, but because it's in a React hook, you don't need to care about that. You just know that it gives you a value and a way to change the value. So what we've got here is uh, just a number input and on change, we're going to handle the change. We're going to just call set form value unless it's a zero and then we're going to do a notification just for the hell of it. So we can show, we can also do notifications and it's custom. What does this look like in the admin UI? Let me show you. So we know that it's on the customer entity. So we'll open up a customer and in the custom fields, we see here's the age and this is a react component. And here we go. I can change it. I can update it. If I refresh the page, we'll see that that has been persisted 
And if I try and go to zero, we get the notification cannot be zero. And let's again, look into the DOM to see if there is some secret iframe hiding there. And no, there isn't, it is just a div and it's just right there in the DOM, completely seamlessly embedded into the admin UI. Okay, and lastly, I wanna show you a bit more of a sophisticated component. Um, and this is gonna do some stuff with the data, some fetching GraphQL and making a mutation and so on. Um, again, we'll start from the roots. We're defining a root uh, with the path products and we're passing this component product list. If we look into this, so again, we've got use injector because we're gonna display a notification with a notification service. Um, but then we have two other custom hooks, use query and use mutation. If you've used the uh, Apollo client for React, then the API design will be familiar because I basically copied it to keep it familiar. Um, but it allows us to define a GraphQL query, a GraphQL mutation, and um, yeah, use that in the idiom idiomatic way of doing data fetching in a React component. So we're using a query get products, and we've got like a loading error, and we've got the data. We can display a loading state or an error state. If we have the data, we can uh, make a table, loop over them. Um, for each of the products that gets displayed, we have a toggle button. If we click through to that, we get to this function where we, we got this toggle enabled function, which is coming from this use mutation hook. And it's just gonna update the product and change the enable state of that product. And um, that gets called from this uh, click handler. So let me show you that running. That's right here, uh, products. So here we go, here we, we've got the list. Again, we, because we're embedded inside the admin UI app, all the styles just kind of flow through and you get this quite a nice seamless look to things. So here we go uh, on laptop, toggle it. We say it's updated. And really cool thing is that this state updates itself, it's, it's reactive. The reason is because this is all backed by the Apollo client, which uses observables like reactive data to uh, update this internal cache. And uh, you've got full access to this, which makes a lot of tasks just work really smoothly with minimal amounts of code. So I can go and disable a few of these. If we then go just to prove that it's actually doing something, if we can go over to the product list and look over here, we see that those ones are indeed disabled. If I go into tablet and enable it, and then we jump back over to our uh, uh, React component, we see that that is enabled. So it really is working with the exact same internal infrastructure as the rest of the admin UI app. So I want to shout out to a couple of people who made this work possible. Um, first of all, Stefan Baumgartner, who you might know as a prolific and excellent TypeScript uh, educator and author, he um, provided me with this demo where he's done a similar kind of concept, putting React components mixed into Angular. And then um, Nathaniel Basel, who has this article using React in Angular applications where literally he like, goes through the exact use case I needed. At, I copy pasted lots of your code. Um, you're gonna be attributed in the source code. But this was, this really got me like, uh, 80, 90% of the way there. So thank you for sharing your work. This is um, really appreciated. And without it, I would have probably taken a week to figure all this stuff out myself. Okay, so this will be in version 2.1, uh, another big feature we've got coming. Um, there's still more work to do to make it um, more, even more seamless to to wrap some more of the um, of the of the internal components in in a React friendly way. But uh, I think it will become 90% easier to start authoring things in React, um, and it's going to be like a first class experience. You can choose Angular, you can choose React, and the nice thing is. Um, we can in future add adapters for other frameworks if we need to. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'm really excited about getting this out. Um, in the next pre-release, maybe we'll have something ready to test. I can't promise anything yet, but uh, it's looking quite promising already. Okay, see you next time.